Hey everybody, welcome to the DBS Films Podcast. My name is Kellen and it is just you and me, so that means it is a DBS production update. Today is June 25th and we have a good amount of stuff going and I'm very excited. So, you know, as always, these episodes just kind of give you a little inside info and where we're at as a uh, production company when it comes to our filmmaking process. Typically, we have something going on in all phases of the screenwriting, of the pre-production, of, well, production is probably the one that we have a little less uh, going on since it's uh, a shoot, but then also the post-production. So these episodes are designed to give you a little inside information. Again, be sure to go ahead and visit our Discord if you haven't already become a part of it. That is the place to be because we make movies for our fans, with our fans, and we love to keep on doing it. And honestly, it is just one of the coolest communities out there. So highly recommend it. So starting off kind of where we are at, let's just go ahead and knock off with uh, where we're at with the murder house. We are reviewing with distribution, seeing if they basically can have something that we think is of value to us. We are kind of leaning in the self upload, which would be the first time we basically try doing it without a distribution company and we upload it directly. The downside to that is you might not always have guaranteed spots on some of these streaming channels, but after the success of the girl in cabin 13, we're pretty confident with the murder house. So right now we're checking on that. The biggest news for the murder house though, and the biggest news of this episode is going to be that our Kickstarter is going to be looking at being finalized so we can launch it in July. I am probably most likely over this weekend going to have a big post for the discord along with another video to kind of talk about the Kickstarter in general, what we're looking for why it's so important to us and just kind of what you can expect when you get out of the different perks levels. Um, we do have basically some, a lot of gear. So it's going to be basically like a big merch drop slash DVD sale. And all of these funds are going to be used for the community, for the super fan event, and also to promote our uh, movie. So we're really excited for it. We're going to get that ironed out over the weekend. Like I said, I should most likely have a video for everyone. Um, sometime over the weekend. Um, and then from there, it's really just getting things ready. I'm hoping we can look at middle of July. We can have the launch of the Kickstarter. So um, everything goes well. We'll keep our fingers crossed when it comes to that. Um, for the uh, screenwriting phase for... Um, actually, let's go into the editing side of things. So right now we're working on the second pass of the, um, the Shapeshifter. And I just spoke with my brother today on our podcast that we're doing. And I'm calling this out right now again, because I was actually talking with him and it happens every single time. So now I'm going to call it out more. Every time we do the rough edit and I show it to him, he's like, oh, okay, you know, that's, it's good. And then he comes back and when he's like, all right, well, I'm going to start making my pass at these edits now. He's always like, oh, this movie's so much worse. So he's like, oh, dude, Shapeshifter's so rough. It's worse than the murder house. And I was like, dude, I have heard that every single time now. I've heard that for Girl in Cabin 13, which is objectively much better than The Hateful Eight. I heard that for Murder House, which is objectively much better than The Girl in Cabin 13. And I'm going to say right now, the the shapeshifter is by far the best movie that we've made um i just wanted to point it out solidify this for the record so when brendan says that it's the best movie ever i can point back to this podcast episode and say i told you so but this really does go back to the editor's mindset in the sense that you know you really do want to be kind of pessimistic going into this process um and it's always best to kind of you know have it turn around from there but i can assure you guys the shapeshifter by far is our best movie out there it is really really good it moves i'm excited for it and i can't wait to continue to work on it when it comes to the screenwriting process for our next feature so we are working on it this sunday actually we're going to have a big meeting we usually like to go out for some sushi and talk about you know all the beats and everything i'm very confident in this one like i i think it's going to be really smooth and straightforward with found footage we're kind of debating the tone and theme. Um, my brother wanted to go really dark and gritty with this one. And I'm like, I don't know how dark or gritty we want to go, but I have my flags I want to fight for um, when it comes to just why things going to move the story and do the plot. But it is coming together super, super smooth. It's coming together really, really well. And I'm excited for it. So 
you know, with that being said, it's something where I think after this Sunday, we'll have a much clearer picture of what's going on and the final beats for it. And then we can start looking into the casting process of that, which again is something that's looking like it's going to take place in the middle of June. And if you do want to be part of the casting process, you do need to go ahead and be in that discord channel of ours. So those are really where we're at on top of that. Our community is growing as always. We are doing so many really, really cool things. We're almost crossed that 1600 person mark. Uh, we're adding some more mods. So if you're part of the mod team or listening right now, thank you guys so much for being super cool with it. And I'm very excited because I think the Kickstarter is really has potential for us to reward our super fans and on top of that for us to make so many new friends in the sense of just how many people learn about um dbs films so appreciate all the work of everyone involved in these processes and you know all of our members it really means the world to us so that kind of wraps up everything when it comes to the production side and our community as always let's go ahead and hop into some of our questions number one is from aries aka officer hawk who is just a champion of DBS. And really, I know someone's going to be a lifelong friend. I know he's listening to this right now. So thank you so much, Aries. It means the world to us that you are part of this family. And you will always be someone that we just always point back to as such a critical part in developing just DBS and the community element. So now that I got that out of the way, his question is, can you break down what you mean by value of the production? And I think this is a great thing for you to point out for me because I don't think it was anything that I ever really um, highlighted before, but um, I probably refer to it as production value um, a lot of times. And what that means is basically when you're watching a movie, you can tell right away an indie movie versus a cinematic Hollywood movie just because of how it looks. And that to me is the production value. You look at something and in your brain, you assign it a cost. And the more you know about filmmaking and movies, the more you can kind of judge it right there. Um, but with that being said, production value stands out like crazy. And when I refer to production value, typically our goal is with our budget to essentially 100x what you think the budget is. You know, that's our goal. Our goal is to try and trick you essentially into thinking that we had a full production team, that we had all of these things. And it really is a lot of the little details. But like one thing I always point out to for production value is like, what do the props look like? Are there multiple locations? You know, if you're in a Hollywood movie, you're jumping around sets and sets and sets. If you're in an indie movie like ours, if you look at Girl in Cabin 13, it's the cabin it's my house and that's it in the woods. So there's only three locations. None of them are set. None of them are a house. None of them are rentals. Like in that sense, um, you know, you, you, you just have that single place there. And if you don't have multiple different locations or things you're jumping around to, you don't really see that production value. Another thing is like special effects and gore. That's your production value. You know, if you pull off good special effects, you're like, oh, wow, this is a Hollywood movie. So to me, the production value term that we kind of talk about is how much could you kind of almost fake someone to see um, in what they're doing? Like, you know, what does it look like? Um, what does it look like in the sense of the, the movie if someone had to assign a value of how much it costs? And our goal is to always 100x what they think it is. So the next question we have is from June. And June is such an amazing part of this community. She asks, what do you think about producing a Franken film of found footage from super fans? Alliteration intended. And if you know me, you know I love alliteration. I just think it's one of the coolest things out there. Um, so I appreciate that question, June. And I would say 1000%. I mean, honestly, like so much, I would really look at doing this because I think um, the coolest thing with this is basically, you know, you can go ahead and have everyone be part of this films and be part of these movies. And once we have a big enough community, everyone's going to want to watch it. And if it's self-contained in that sense, then it makes you know perfect sense for us to do it. I think one thing we were talking about today with me and my brother was how excited we are for once we kind of get to a bigger level with scale and we have a budget because we see the value in making these movies and we see the value in practicing. So even if it's something where it's like just making a super low budget found footage movie, but it's nothing but super fans. We have super fans work on the script. We have super fans even working on the cast, like in the crew element of it. That'd be something that we would highly, highly, highly consider and continue to look at doing because if we do that 
you know, it's only going to grow our community. It's only going to get people more involved and it's only going to give us more practice. So perfect timing and bringing that up June. Cause I really do think, you know, what you're going to eventually see is like, yeah, DBS will have our strikes at like the more Hollywood approach movies, but on the backside, we're always going to be having these, you know, lower budget levels that we're looking at. And to give you an idea, you know, if we make million dollars movies, we're still going to make these movies for, you know, what the level that we're at here. So with that being said, you know, I think I cannot wait to continue to make movies and have a good time there. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the final question that we have here. And the final question is from Ashley Lee, and she mentions, do you have a creature feature in mind for a future project? Honestly, I don't really have one for a future project. We have one in the banks. I'd love to do like a more on Wendigo. I'd love to do more of like just these different beasts in the woods but until we have a cgi and a gore budget until we have something like that then we're not going to be able to go ahead and execute it to where i would feel comfortable because if you make a creature feature you got to have a good creature and if you don't have a good creature for a creature feature your production value instantly plummets and before you know it you're getting laughed at for how ridiculous it looks i mean even if you look at like frank or you know even sid we're gonna hide for the most part like unless it's like an actual person in a clown mask which is what we've been doing it, it's tough to have a creature feature but that being said cgi scaling all of these things are super easy to get into and if we get at that level it, it's going to be easy for us to go ahead and add into that and do a creature feature. So 100%, I will be looking at doing one at some point in time. I think that'd be a great found footage one for you too. So that being said, it's gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode of the podcast. Be sure to follow us online at our Discord channel. Let us know what you think, watch our movies. All of these things mean the world to us because again, we are DBS Films making movies with our fans, for our fans. And until we see you again, have a good one.